the question the House to now adjourn, and I call the Manager of Opposition Business. Thanks, Speaker. Don't give them what they want. That's a question that you always ask when there's an appalling speech. Don't give them what they want. They want to incite a debate, and the debate, when it happens, when you hit back, is exactly what they might have hoped for. But there has to be a point when this parliament says enough. And if we haven't reached that point tonight, then for some of us there is apparently no limit at all. In the other place, Senator Anning has just delivered his first speech. And in giving the sort of bile that we get from time to time against Muslim Australians, he has decided to invoke the term final solution. It's just shame. Another speech belittling Australians, another speech dividing the nation, another speech wanting to incite debate, and those who have thought that maybe the best thing is to not give them what they want, I say if we continue to hold back, they've got exactly what they want. Muslim Australians, African Australians, Chinese Australians, when you invoke the final solution, Jewish Australians, in the same way as in years gone by, Greek Australians and Italian Australians have been the subject, subjects of prejudice, the bigotry of today is no different to the bigotry of yesterday. And the bipartisanship against it that we had in years gone by, we don't have right now, and it must return. That's right. It must return. The words that happened in the other place are not the words of a proud Australian. They are the words of people who hate modern Australia, people who hate who we are as Australians. The overseas voices have been encouraged and welcomed into this country. We had Lauren Southern turn up to my local area. She arrived with a camera crew here from, from North America, looked around and said, oh, look, it's all monoculture, all monoculture, just like we've had the so-called person in charge of multicultural affairs claim that we've got all these monocultural areas throughout Australia. The film crew and the journo who was there were good enough to say, well, which monoculture? Is it the Arabic culture represented by that shop or the Vietnamese culture represented by that shop, the Pakistani, the Pacific Islander? Which monoculture are you talking about? To which Lauren Southern said, well, there isn't even an English pub. And they said, well, there's actually one immediately behind you. <laughs> Our diversity is nothing to be afraid of. But the silence that has come from those opposite is everything to fear. Because the fight for modern Australia when it's under attack in this way, is only going to be won when we get to the point of bipartisanship again and be in no doubt we are not there right now. If anyone wondered whether we were there, a lot changed at the last election. Immediately after the last election, members of One Nation were returned to the parliament. At that time, instead of adopting the sort of language that John Howard had adopted, the government members started to refer to One Nation today as being more sophisticated than they used to be. Bigotry is not sophisticated. In the Longman by-election, they are now allocating preferences to One Nation, not following John Howard's lead on putting One Nation last. We had the 18C legislation, not referred to during the election campaign, suddenly brought on the parliament to give extra licence for racist hate speech. We had the immigration minister stand right there and refer to Australians not as second and third generation Australians, but as second and third generation Lebanese Muslims, and then describe them as a mistake. We had the government introduce university level English test, but you didn't have to reach university level English if you were immigrating from the five English speaking nations that are predominantly white. Canada, the United States, Ireland, the UK or New Zealand. They didn't have to do the test. Only the people from the non-white countries, if they had grown up with English, had to do it. We have the member for New England constantly in his, board, his book, Weather, Board and Iron, referring to the poor white regional fringe. Why is the white reference there all the time? I say to those opposite, it's not good enough to turn up to the community fundraisers and events, say all the right things there and think people won't notice what's been happening in the parliament. Don't apologise for racism, don't imitate it and don't preference it. Yeah.